I recently 100% completed Five Nights at Freddy's 1, and I asked myself if this ten year old game still holds up to this day and age. With each game I beat in 100% complete, and yes, that means on the custom night, I want to do an in-depth personal review of each game, so if you want to see me on my journey of playing every Five Nights at Freddy's game, consider subscribing because it helps out a lot, and if you enjoyed this video, liking the video will also help as well. First, I want to get this out of the way, I've been a fan of FNAF for as long as the franchise has been out, but I never played the games until now, so I never got the experience to feel that others did for myself so for my first time playing it was nerve wracking the first game does that very effectively the office is very compact and the only thing protecting you is two doors and lights that drain your power on use building the stress of managing uses of your power over the night which can lead to very intense moments at the at the later half of the game which the animatronics get more aggressive the name of the game is 5 until 6 a.m. Managing your power, looking through the cameras, and trying not to get stuffed in a shoot by the animatronics. Mentioning animatronics, the first FNAF game has Freddy as the main star of the show and game. A bell with a top hat and microphone, an iconic laugh. Also, cool fact about Freddy, apparently there is a handprint on his face. Probably just a kid, but it could be something more. Freddy is a very unique animatronic that requires you to look at him on the camera. You must do this often because he will laugh, indicating he has moved. On Hollow Nights, he's very fast and can kill you quickly if not careful. Bonnie the Guitar Player Bonnie is based off of a bunny who has a nice red bow tie and is the most aggressive animatronic in the game. He will appear at your left door. If he does this, just sign your light and if he's dealt, close the door and do not open your camera. He can also jam the door button, which means death if Foxy's active. Chica the Chicken, to be honest, I don't even think she plays an instrument unlike the other two, maybe a flute or something, I don't know. But she has a bib that says let's eat, which adds to her creepiness. Chica is probably the creepiest animatronic in this game, and she happens to have a great fondness for pizza, going to the kitchen and looking for some. Fun fact about her, loving pizza became a running gag because of a YouTube video called How to Make FNAF Not Scary. Chica acts the same as Bonnie except on your left door she appears on your right. If she jams the door, you are safer than when Bonnie does it, cause nothing can get you if you don't open your cams. Foxy the Pirate, the worn down animatronic that coincides in Pirate's Cove but is out of order. Foxy the Pirate is based on a pirate with a hook for a hand and an eye patch on his right eye. Foxy is a very unique animatronic requiring you to flip your camera to check up on him. If he isn't in Pirate's Cove, check the West Hall cam and he will be shown running to your office. Close, close your door fast or you will meet your demise. Fun fact about Foxy, you don't need to look at Pirate's Cove to prevent him from moving. It's still good to check on him ever so often, just in case he did leave. If he's gone and you didn't check your camera, then you will have about 23 seconds before he arrives at your door, ending you. I hate Foxy with all my past and he has ended once for me plenty of times. Golden Freddy Golden Freddy is a well easter egg animatronic. When checking camera 2B, there is a 1 out of 100 chance to see a Golden Freddy post or placing the Freddy one. When he closes the cams, he will be in the office with the message appearing saying, It's me, then proceeds to jump scare the player and closing the game. This effect can also happen if you put the numbers 1987 in the custom night screen. Golden Freddy is such a unique animatronic in the franchise that will have more importance down the line, but in FNAF 1, he's just a scary easter egg. I would feel bad if someone got him on 420 mode though. One end all. With all the animatronics explained, let's begin with Night 1. Night 1 begins with a phone call from someone, we don't know his name, but the community has named this guy, Phone Guy, and he is voiced by the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's himself, Scott Cotham. Here's what he has to say. Oh! Oh! oh. Uh, I wanted to record a message for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. So, I know it can be a bit overwhelming, but I'm here to tell you there's nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll do fine. So, let's just focus on getting you through your first week, okay? Uh, let's see. First, there's an introductory greeting from the company. That I'm supposed to read. It's kind of a legal thing, you know. Um, welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovering that damage or death has occurred, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced. Blah, blah, blah. Now, that might sound bad, I know, but there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. If I were forced to sing, 
those same stupid songs for 20 years and I never got a bath, I'd probably be a bit irritable at night too. So remember, these characters hold a special place in the hearts of children and we need to show them a little respect, right? Okay. So just be aware, the characters do tend to wander a bit. Uh, they're left in some kind of free roaming mode at night. Uh, something about their servos locking up, they get turned off for too long. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too. But then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Uh, now, concerning your safety, the only real risk to you as a night watchman here, if any, is the fact that these characters, uh, if they happen to see you after hours, probably won't recognize you as a person. They'll, they'll most likely see you as a metal endoskeleton without its costume on. Now, since that's against the rules here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, they'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. Um, now, that wouldn't be so bad if the suits themselves weren't filled with cross beams, wires, and animatronic devices, especially around the facial area. So you can imagine how having your head forcefully pressed inside one of those could cause a bit of discomfort and death. Uh, the only parts of you that would likely see the light of day again would be your eyeballs and teeth when they pop out the front of the mask. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you these things when you sign up. But hey, first station of the breeze. I'll chat with you tomorrow. Uh, check those cameras and remember to close the doors only if absolutely necessary. Gotta conserve power. Alright, good night. He explained that the animatronics will more at night, and if they get you, they will forcefully stuff you into a Buddy Fazbell suit, and mentioned something about the infamous bite of 87. Fun Guy is a pretty awkward sounding guy, and is a fan favorite character in the series, basically being the guide for the player who is brand new to the game, which is very helpful and brings personality to the series. Night 1 is the easiest night in the game, the only two animatronics are Chica and Bonnie this night, and if you don't use the cams, Foxy can peek out at Pirate's Cove. By the way, it is possible for Foxy to attack twice this night, so check up on him. As my first FNAF game, this was terrifying. With the random noises playing and the eerie atmosphere, this game just oozes of dread and I can definitely agree with people who think FNAF 1 is terrifying because it absolutely is. <laughs> Night 2, we get another call from the phone guy checking up on us. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, well, if you're hearing this and you made it to Day 2, uh, congrats! I, I won't talk quite as long this time since Freddy and his friends tend to become more active as the week progresses. Uh, it might be a good idea to peek at those cameras while I talk, just to make sure everyone's in their proper place, you know. Uh, interestingly enough, Freddy himself doesn't come off stage very often. I've heard he becomes a lot more active in the dark, though, so hey, I guess that's one more reason not to run out of power, right? Uh, I also want to emphasize the importance of using your door lights. Uh, there are blind spots in your camera views, and those blind spots happen to be right outside your doors. So if, if you can't find something or someone on your cameras, uh, be sure to check the door lights. Uh, you might only have a few seconds to react. Uh, not that you would be in any danger, of course. Uh, I'm not implying that. Uh, also, uh, check on the curtain in Pirate Cove from time to time. The character in there seems unique in that he becomes more active if the cameras remain off for long periods of time. Uh, I guess he doesn't like being watched. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'm sure you have everything under control. Uh, talk to you soon! So the one down is that the animatronics get more aggressive as the nights go on and don't run out of power because Freddy will come out and kill you. The animatronics get more aggressive on night two, but it shouldn't be too much for you to handle. Check the doors and foxy ever so often and pay attention to audio cues because you can actually hear Bonnie and Chica moving near your door. <laughs> night 3. This night is when things get serious. All the animatronics are now active, meaning that you have Buddy in the mix of things this time around and for the remaining nights of the game. Here's what Fungi has to say. Hello, oh, hello. Oh. Hey, you're doing great. Uh, most people don't last this long. I mean, you know, they usually move on to other things by now. Uh, I'm not implying that they died. That, that, that's not what I meant. Uh, anyway, I, I better not take up too much of your time. Uh, things start getting real tonight. Uh, uh, hey, listen, I, I had an idea. If you happen to get caught, 
and want to avoid getting stuffed into a Freddy suit, uh, try playing dead. You know, go limp. Then there's a chance that uh, maybe they'll think that you're an empty costume instead. Uh, then again, if they think you're an empty costume, they might try to stuff a metal skeleton into you. I wonder how that would work. Y yeah, never mind. Scratch that. It's best just not to get caught. Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave you to it. See you on the flip side. Bone Guy says to play dead when the power goes out, but that doesn't even work, so don't even try it. <laughs> Bone Guy himself mentions that things get real. Check Foxy two times every two minutes and keep your camera on Freddy to prevent him from moving. My experience with this night, in my opinion, this is when things actively become more difficult. And it really puts the dread in this situation. It's not the hardest thing in the game, but it is a big difficulty spike. <laughs> Night 4 is the saddest night in the game. Just listen to the phone call. Oh, oh, hey. Hey, wow, day 4. I knew you could do it. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I may not be around to send you a message tomorrow. It's, it's been a bad night here for me. Um, I'm kind of glad that I recorded my messages for you. So when I did, uh, hey, do me a favor. Uh, maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. I'm gonna try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, I, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads back there. You know. Oh no. A night full phone guy, our pal, dies, and it is a very shocking moment in the game, and shows us that this is serious and you can die. Night 4 is a more intense 4 than Night 3. The biggest problem you have is conserving power. I suggest watching Ambience's video on how to beat this night in the upcoming nights because his strat helped me out so much and it will for you guys as, as well. <laughs> night 5, the final night of Five Nights at Freddy's. Everyone is at the max. Surprisingly, you get a phone call. <laughs> For this night, I highly suggest watching Ambience's Night 5 Guide video for this night because, like I said, everyone is at the max and you really want to conserve your power on this night. This is the night I got my first jump scare because of Foxy, so yeah, things get pretty crazy. After completing this night, we get a paycheck directed towards our main character, Mike Smith, and we get a check for a miserable $120, Bruh. which in my opinion, was not worth it in the slightest. After beating Night 5, it gets into the main menu, now you can see a star and the Night 6. Did I mention that Night 5 was the final night? Well, I was lying. Night 6 is Night 5, but even harder. The same strat for Night 5 can still be used for Night 6, so you should be fine if you don't make any mistakes. Surprisingly, I didn't die on night 6, so went of applause for me, but it is RNG based, which means I got lucky. After completing night 6, you get another star for the main screen and unlock custom night. Custom night can be the hardest or easiest thing in the entire game because you get to control how aggressive the animatronics are. This brings up the max mode of this game. Not everyone does these because these are very difficult. And that one is probably the second easiest max mode in the series, but don't get me wrong, this is still a max mode, and it's extremely difficult, and you don't have to beat it if you don't want to. I personally want to beat every max mode in FNAF because not only I like the challenge and mastery of the said game, but it's also a big achievement to do something as hard as a max mode. The max mode for FNAF 1 is called 420, meaning you turn every animatronic to 20 difficulty, which you'll never experience in the game so far, so it's a big difference compared to Night 5 and Night 6. Like I mentioned before, Ambience made an amazing video on 420 mode, and it helped me so much with this night, I beat it within 3 attempts. FNAF 1 is very RNG based, so if you don't win right away, it's not your fault. On my second attempt, Foxy came out at 12am and jump scared me, so don't take it too hard. Take deep breaths and focus. It is very nerve wracking, but I believe in you. If you beat 420, you get a screen that says you are fired because you are tampering with the animatronics in your odor. Hey, I can't help that man, that was intense. Jokes aside, the odor part is a very important key factor to our main character and how important he is to the story of Five Nights at Freddy's. With all the nights done, this game aids like a fine line. It's still very scary and atmospheric, almost feeling like you inside of the pizza wheel yourself. It's not the hardest game in the series anymore, but difficulty doesn't always equal a great game. In my opinion, this is an amazing force game, and I am not surprised why the internet fell in love with its animatronic bell. 
The sec next game in the series is Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Does it still hold up? Or is it as bad as people say? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribing would help out a ton. And liking and commenting also helps me see you guys enjoy the video as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.